In today's video, we're going to show you around Tokyo and try a conveyor belt sushi restaurant. Stay tuned. But first things first, we got hungry on the train ride over, so we had to stop and get a shawarma. Mm. Our original intention was to eat at Kura Sushi, but the wait was just over four hours. So we decided to start at Kebab Box J, which is in Shibuya City. It is the best shawarma we've had in Japan. Q beautiful spinning meat. Everybody, amazing. The best, really good. Now that we were no longer hangry, we decided to head out into the Harajuku neighborhood to do some shoe shopping, check out the sights while we waited for our table at Kura. It was finally time. Let's head over to Kura for some conveyor belt sushi. And then we ate. Let's check out some Kura Sushi. Hello everybody, Sumbi Shmei here, and welcome back to another amazing episode in our second episode of our new conveyor belt series. If you haven't seen our Sushiro one, we'll put a link to that video in the description, but we're going around all of Japan comparing different conveyor belt sushis since the Sushiro one blew up so much. So make sure to go check out the playlist. This will be the second episode. And what do you what would you rank Shushiro since we didn't give it an overall rating when we went? Shushiro is seven out of ten for me. Uh, Shushiro's in Yokosuka. We actually made the trip all the way out here to downtown Tokyo. So this is in the big city in a cool spot and it's looking pretty good. Yes, and I'd give Shushiro an eight out of ten in this and this conveyor belt sushi already looks amazing. If you didn't know, this is the Kura conveyor belt sushi, which is a very famous conveyor belt sushi chain here next to Shushiro. But this is the largest conveyor belt sushi in the world. There is literally 48 booths spread out of I don't know how many feet. Like it's here, probably like 200 feet away, so connected by the conveyor belt. Absolutely amazing, absolutely gigantic, but that doesn't compare if the sushi isn't good. That's right, and the conveyor belt is so long that they actually have a rapid speed line on the top. Looks like it's going 100 miles per hour to deliver the sushi on time, fresh and delicious. So we're gonna order some sushi. Uh, we're gonna see what the differences are, and we'll go from there. Remember as we start to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can follow us whenever we have new videos that come out. Agreed, definitely do that. But now, let's order. The first order of food arrived. We got some hamburger steak. Ben's favorite, one of his favorites that we're gonna try. Yeah, so this is a hamburger steak with a demi glaze sauce with some cheese. So it's a cheesy demi glaze. Mm. The hamburger steak. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. So the first thing I'll say about it, the rice is really, really good. The burger is very good too. But I like the rice a lot. How about you? The, the rice has almost like a special type of flavor. I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like a wet mayonnaise type flavor. Mm. But it's really good. And it and the hamburger steak itself, nice, juicy, has a flavor. I like that one. Can I that recommend it. Can never go wrong with a hamburger steak in Japan. All right, so this one is called takoyaki. It has been known to burn the mouth, so if you order it, be very careful because it can be very hot. 
This one comes with some, what are the things on the top called? So those are bonito flakes, which is right. fish, and it gives the, and it starts moving because of the heat that's surrounding it, but the takoyaki itself is a homemade type batter that the Japanese like to eat a lot. In the middle, there's a tiny piece of squid, which gives it a little surprise, and it's very, very doughy, almost like pizza crust in the middle. Right, most comparable to probably like a corn fritter or a hush puppy. And then the bonito flakes on top, they almost look like they're alive. They kind of move around, so. Yes, yeah, so when I've had this, it tastes ultra fishy because of the bonito flakes, so I'm ready to give it a try. All right, cheers. All right, cheers. What I really like about that one is it's not flaming hot, so you can really taste all the flavors and not burn your mouth. But it's a great flavor, very good. The flavor is like, exactly like you said, a hush puppy. Mm -hmm. It's literally the definition. But all the other ones I've had, they're always so fishy. This one isn't as strong in the flavor, which I like, because I don't like extremely strong ones, but that's so, so good. Yeah. I recommend this one. Me too. Highest recommendation. So the next one is a piece of unagi, right? Unagi eel, and it's actually a monster piece. It's very big. It's extra large, and it looks like it's plain, so we had to put some of our eel sauce on it, which came with the table. So let's try it. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> This is a very big piece of eel. It had more of the eel meat flavor instead of the saucy grilled flavor that we're maybe used to. What do you think? I didn't like it at all. And I'm sorry, but I really did not enjoy it. The one at Shishiro is definitely destroying this. I'm sorry, I just have to be straight out about it. This is like a dry piece of chicken if it was a fish. And it has a very more down to earth flavor. And you can literally Taste the bones more than the other one. Yeah. I don't know why, but easily not my favorite. But the coating that gives the rice, I like. I like the rice itself with the coating for the eel. Yeah, so if you're comparing restaurants, Sushiro is the highest quality. I really have never had any issues with any of the food at Sushiro, but agreed, the eel, definitely not as good as Sushiro eel. All right, everybody, so here we have the shrimp tempura, which is in a nice tempura batter, like every other tempura, which is the, one of my favorite batters and it looks like, I hope it's a fresh shrimp, and then we put some eel sauce on it because that's our favorite. So I think I'm actually gonna go hands on this one. Yep, definitely, because it has a tail on it, so. Yes, right. so cheers. Cheers. Mm. The batter is very light. The shrimp does taste fresh and good. Very flavorful, sweet. The batter tastes like oil, but the shrimp is really good. I was not a big fan of the batter. I'm so, yes, I like, I usually like the batter, but this one just fell straight off. And I'm not a big fan of that. But I mean, if you like to just take it off, then I like that, but I wasn't a big fan of the batter myself. But, so good shrimp, bad batter. All right, everybody, so next we're moving on to two slices of pork. It looks almost like bacon, but it has a bit of fattiness. Looks pretty good. Are you ready, Dad? All right, let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Probably the best piece of sushi I had. That's amazing pork. Something you'll notice in Japan is you'll never find a piece of crispy bacon, but the flavor is pretty good on the pork bacon that they have here. So that was kind of like a piece of bacon on top of a little mound of rice. Very good. I would not consider that bacon. I considered it more of a marinated slice of pork. Yeah. That one is really good. I recommend that one. It's just the reason why I took it off is because I feel like the rice to meat ratio is like more, is like three times more rice than the meat, so I thought that overpowered the flavor a bit. But overall, really good. All right, everybody, so next we have a shrimp tempura pan roll, and it looks like it has a crab salad on it with some rice, so I guess I'll go first bite. Cheers. Flavor is actually really good on that. It has like a lot of mayonnaise, but I feel mm -hmm. like it complements the shrimp and rice really well. Though that's the same shrimp, I taste more of the shrimp itself than the tempura. I think that's 
possibly the best thing I had. That's really good. Yeah, maybe they used a different mayonnaise in that one. It had a much lighter, less fatty flavor. And I, I feel like the shrimp here is really good quality. The actual shrimp itself has a really good flavor. He loves fried chicken. He loves karage in particular. Karage. Japanese fried chicken. So yes. that's what we ordered. This one has a little bit of sauce on it. Uh, not much, but it has some type of flavor sauce on it. Um, maybe we'll, we'll find out what it's like. But I think that's almost like a like a fat from it from cooking it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but I kind of want to try it. Okay. All right. So you want to grab this? Yes. Cheers. Cheers. It's very juicy. Mm -hmm. That sauce is like a, almost like a hot oil. Spicy or, maybe? Yeah, it's spicy. I don't taste any spice in this, but I'm pretty sure they assume it's spicy. I have like a bit of a spice flavor, mm -hmm. but the, the chicken itself is juicy, yeah. but the coating is not crunchy. The coating's not, yeah, I agree. It's not crunchy. A little bit soft. Not greasy though. But it's a little bit soft, but good flavor. Not my highest recommendation for the menu. Maybe avoid the fried chicken, stick with the takoyaki. Um, but it's it's okay. I didn't think it was that bad, but it's not the best I've had. I've had way better. All right, everybody, so here we got two mochis. Since this year, 2023, is the year of the rabbit, they have a rabbit-themed mochi. Then here, they have another mochi, which is a New Year's theme mochi, which has a mandarin orange on top of it. So which one do you want to try first? Uh, let's try the rabbit. All right, let's try the rabbit. In honor of the year of the rabbit here in Japan. You want to do a bite from each end? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Mmm. <laughs> so, it's a mochi. Mmm. Is that red bean paste? There's red bean paste. It's super soft, mm. it's super sweet, That's delicious. That's really good. The rabbit lost his ears, ears are gone, but it's good. I recommend it. I feel like it's sweet, but it's a good sweet. I didn't mind it, I thought it was actually pretty good. So I recommend that one. All right, let's try the other one. This is a, a mound of mochi with mandarin orange. Not quite sure what's inside of it. The mandarin orange is symbolic of the new year also. Go ahead. All right, let's try a bite. Looks like it has the same filling. Mm. It tastes exactly the same. Same flavor, different look. Always something special in Japan. You have to look for those little things and hopefully we can help point you in the right direction through our YouTube channel. But that's a special little treat, something that you might not find anywhere else with a different, very unique flavor. So we recommend always checking out something new. So the next one we have is the Young Yellowtail. We wanted to try some of the fish here uh, that's raw to see what the quality's like as we compare the different sushi uh, chain restaurants. So I'm gonna have mine with a little bit of soy sauce on top. Cheers. Well, Ben is chewing on that. I think it's a little bit rough to eat raw fish after trying a dessert. It just doesn't necessarily jive together the right way. So maybe it's turning his stomach a little bit. Mm. I'm gonna be so blatantly honest here. I get that people enjoy this type of stuff, but me, to me, it tastes like if Play-Doh was seawater. I honestly did not like it. I, I would not eat that again. But I mean, I'm open to try new things. It's a food channel, but I honestly did not like that. But I mean, I feel like it was a cool experience. Probably a once in a year experience. But I did enjoy it. That's right. Kind of. You've got to be honest about what you like, but also be open and try different things. That's really good. I thought it was good, but it was a bad lineup because we just tried the mochi. So when you have that sweet mochi flavor followed by raw fish, it's not the proper order of eating the food. Um, it's a bad combo on the tongue. That was my biggest thing. I like the flavor of it in general, but it was a bad order of eating the food. It just threw everything off to eat something sweet. All right, so this is the last one of the night. This is a tamago, which is sweet egg over rice 
nigiri style. So just to make it clear, it's not a sweet egg. It's an egg prepared a certain way where they have egg, then they whisk it with some milk and I'm sure in these restaurants with some sugar to add that sweet flavor. Mm -hmm. But this is a specialty here in Japan. There's just restaurants that just master just cooking this one specific item. So I guess we'll see if this juicy in general is good. Very true. Good cheers. <laughs> All right, so note to self in the future, the sweet soy sauce or the eel sauce does not go well with tamago. It, it didn't not. mix very well, so, but, uh, but that's our bad. <laughs> so sometimes at the end of a meal, you just have to have something sweet. So we decided to order some crepes, which are very famous and good in Japan. Yes, and I got a strawberry crepe that looks like a sorbet with some whipped cream and pistachios on top. And what did you get? I got a banana chocolate with some sorbet and whipped cream and pistachios. Cheers. Mmm, it's not actually sherbet or sorbet. It's custard, which is also very big in Japan and very delicious. I'm a big fan of this one. Custard in Japan is like Amazing. The best custard better anywhere you go. Wow. This is amazing. I love this. So we see you right there and we know that we got to give you our rating for Kura. What do you think, Dad? So Kura was probably the worst sushi go around I've ever had in my life. <laughs> We did have some good things to say about the sushi. We're thankful that we have food to eat and that we're able to do this. But being totally honest, I would try to find maybe another local sushi restaurant uh, to go to. It's a good time, good pace, good crepes. Not everything's bad, but overall I give it about a five out of 10. For me, I thought the sushi was, how can I put this lightly? Horrendous. Some of it was. I didn't like the eel. It wasn't horrendous. I thought I'm grateful that we have to. I just much rather have spent this money at Shushiro, which is definitely a must try. This I do not recommend. But I do recommend one thing those crepes. The crepes were like a special fruit crepe. I would just come here for those crepes. One of the best crepes I've had in Japan. And the scenery is nice. And all the shopping and everything here is one, one of my favorites. So I would rate this a 4 out of 10. Okay. It has some good aspects, but I really did not like it as much as the other one. So, Shushiro is still the reigning champ over all conveyor belt sushis. Although it's just two episodes in, Shushiro is still amazing. You guys know what time it is. It's time to end the video. So make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when these videos come out. And they come out. And if you just want to see what our family is doing on our daily lives, then make sure to go check out our Instagram account at Simply Schmidt. And if you just want to see the family having some fun, then make sure to go check out our TikTok account, Simply Schmidt. Make sure to like, like and subscribe. subscribe. Wow! <laughs>